sick of hearing that noise when you're driving down the road, stick around, I'll show you how to fix that for pretty much free. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, as you heard, we're gonna be showing you how to diagnose and fix the loud screeching noises coming from your Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2, which would be like a 2011 to 2000, I don't know, 20 or so. Uh, anyhow, this is for the most part going to be free with the exception of one simple thing, maybe two, uh, which is gonna be basically two clicks, one to subscribe and one to like this video. I'll wait on you while you do that. Okay, so assuming that you did that, let's go ahead and move forward. The only tools that you'll probably need to fix this in the way I'm gonna do it uh, will be some sort of silicone, uh, something to clean the windshield with, a little bit of tape, and obviously something to apply the silicone with. Now there's a few different ways you could do this. Uh, I'm gonna do it this way because I actually went ahead and did a video on the BMW E63 or E64 uh, and showed you how to do that on the windshield before, kind of the same scenario. Um, but in this scenario, we're gonna be using a little bit different stuff. Now this is what I used on the BMW, however that's almost gone, so I'm gonna use a basic clear silicone. Now you guys can use clear or black. I don't think I have to tell you not to use white or almond color because that's kind of common sense. Now moving forward, I want you to go ahead and listen to some, basically a couple sound clips to show you uh, what this sounds like because it might be a different issue for you. So go ahead and listen to these. Okay, so if that's what it sounds like in your car, this is most likely the problem. And for the most part, you can diagnose this by, well, a few different ways. First of all, you can look at your windscreen here and your lower shield cowling here, and you can see that it'll be bubbled out, kind of like so. You can kind of see that's the sun is what gets you uh, when that happens there. Um, this is actually a pretty easy fix, but there's a couple different ways to determine if it's wind noise that does it. Now, for our car, it didn't happen until about 65, 70 miles an hour. Um, I went ahead and put this tape on it to see if it would change it, and it did. It started coming out at 45. Uh, another way to do it would be getting behind a semi, uh, obviously at your own discretion, and uh, riding its wind tunnel close to behind them so the wind is going around you. You'd notice that it won't be there as well. So uh, the main problem, again, as I shared with you, is this colon or sun starts to develop a kind of a curl to it. And at that point, it's basically no longer sealing, and the wind is coming through your front grill and up and through this little screen so it kind of reminds me of I don't know if you remember being a kids and somebody putting a plate of grass between their thumbs and blowing on it I don't know why I remember that uh, but same basic principle it's kind of whistling is what it's doing so the idea is that we're gonna basically seal this off and stop it from the wind coming through but more importantly this seal is here because it's supposed to pre prevent dirt and moisture from getting down into your vehicle which is just as important so again we're going to go ahead and use some silicone here and we're going to silicone the back side of it and then we're going to press and tape against this thing and let it sit overnight to seal first thing i have to do is peel off this old tape that i did to test it and i need to clean this thing this windex to make sure both the inside the seal here and the windscreen or the windshield will be clean so the adhesive or the silicone will stick to it okay so after cleaning it you can kind of look at it and see the big large gap between the windshield and the seal when I hardly even pulled out on it. So you can kind of see how it's old and aging and starting to get to the point where it can't really keep itself tight against the windshield. Uh, now again, I did tell you there's a couple different ways to do this. The idea of this is to use something you have around the house. I think these uh, windscreens here, the, the covers are like somewhere like 240 bucks or something. So it's not real, really necessary to replace this thing if you can use something around the house. Now, if you don't have silicone, you're not doing this way, you could always use some kind of cheap weather seal you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's that would kind of it would kind of push this out, but at least it would stop the water from coming in and the wind from coming out. Um, you could even cut off the old part of the seal right here, which is what we did in the BMW, and they make a seal that actually is uh, kind of fits over top of the piece here with an extra flap just like this one that holds against the windscreen. So you could use that as well, but again, that's going to cost you. So I think probably the best bet and the best bang for your buck, I guess you could say, uh, or, or free buck, would be using the silicone. So anyways, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pry this back. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and put a bead or a, a piece of tape all the way along the seam right here because I don't want any of the silicone when it gets pressed down to get up on the actual windscreen itself because then I have to try to scrape it off, which is a hassle. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a little bit of tape. We'll silicone it. We'll press it in. Okay, so there's our first layer of tape applied. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the silicone in the inside of the lip right here. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but the silicone is now applied, and now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take another piece of tape, and I'm gonna put it half on the seal and half on the, on the first layer of tape, and I'm gonna go ahead and push that on nice and tight so it sticks down the seal to where it's supposed to go. 
and uh, we'll see how well it's held. If not, we might have to use a couple things behind the windshield wipers to hold it too, but we'll see when we get there. Let me try putting this other layer of tape on. And there is our second layer of tape. Now it is bubbled up still slightly right here, as you can see. I can push on it and make it go down. I think what I'm gonna do though, rather than pushing on that because the sun's gonna end up warping it again, is that I'm gonna go ahead and put the first layer of uh, silicone like you see on. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna peel off the second layer of tape and I'm gonna see if I have to apply a second layer of silicone, which might be the final layer. Uh, but give me a minute. We'll come back here shortly when this is dry and we'll see if we need another one. Okay, so as you can see, as I figured, there was a couple layers like around the wipers where it's bulged up still where it didn't cover. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave this layer, uh, this layer off, the, the second layer of tape I put on. I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice thin layer all the way across it. I'm gonna leave it off. When I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and use a razor blade and scrape all along the edge just to make sure it's not stuck to the tape and we'll leave it like that and test it. All right guys, so it's finally dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take a razor blade. I'm gonna cut along the edge right there and I'm gonna peel up this tape. We'll see how it looks. If I don't like the way it looks, I may use a small amount of the black stuff we used before to give it more of a OEM look. Uh, that was kind of what I was going for. I was thinking that it would flatten out for the most part, so I wouldn't have to, but I may have to. So let me go ahead and use this razor blade, clean this thing off, and pull the tape off, see what it looks like. All right, guys, so overall it looks pretty good. It's starting to get kind of dark out, so I think that we're going to have to continue this tomorrow morning. But uh, overall, I'd say it looks pretty good. I left a little bit of residue because it's not completely dry along the edges here. You can see I still have to clean some of the stuff off. Not a big deal. I'm thinking I might still do part of the black just along the edge just to conceal this. Part of me says, you know what, as long as it works, that's the most important part. And the other part of me says, yeah, right, it's not going to be left like that. So we'll see what we do in the morning. The biggest thing is before we do anything to it, we're going to go for a little test run to make sure that the noise is gone. And then we'll worry about aesthetics after that. Okay, so as you can see, it is the next day, bright and sunny, and everything is dry on our lower valance or panel. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this old beast on a ride, and we're going to get up to 70 miles an hour, and we're going to see if this fix actually worked. All right, guys, so we are in the boonies in Mexico, and we are going to test this to see if this free hack actually does work. So we're going to go ahead and get up to 70. And once we're at 70 miles an hour, we're gonna check for those same whistles and leaks. If it doesn't leak or whistle, then we know we're good and ready to go. So there are 60, so far so good. Of course, I'm not flooring it. I gotta be careful I don't get pulled over in Mexico because you don't want it to get stuck here. All right, so there is 70 miles an hour. And so here, there is absolutely no leaks whatsoever. So. Our hack worked, that's fantastic. Now let's get back to the place. All right, so we got our one bead of tape down. Um, unfortunately, tape will not stick to the old seal. I don't know because if it's rubber or whatever it is, but it will not stick to it no matter what I do. So I'm just gonna have to try to be clean and get it just on the windshield as best as I can and not so much on the seal. Um, hopefully it'll look okay. Uh, it's not really my expertise, but I'm gonna try to do so anyways. Uh, fortunately for me, the windshield's like 10,000 degrees right now, like maybe actually. Uh, so that's real fun. It's nice and hot. The good news is it should help basically cure the uh, the silicone or whatever it is quick, but uh, it's going to suck touching it. So let me get that stuff on, then I'll, uh, I guess I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there is it with the black silicone or sealant on it. Now it's time for me to basically peel off the uh, last of the tape, and then we'll see how the final product looks. All right, and so there you have it. Now the only suggestion I would make when doing this, you probably don't want to do what I did and do it directly in the sunlight. Because uh, I went ahead and went to peel the tape off before it was cured or drying. It dried instantly. It, it was already rubbery. So I definitely would uh, probably do it in the shade. You'll have better luck. It didn't turn out too bad. It's a little rough around the edges, but obviously when you, when you drop these, you don't really notice it. It looks just fine. Now this car is getting older. It's a 2011 and it's got like 67,000 miles. So for those of you that might be interested in this Jeep type stuff, you might wanna subscribe if you haven't already because I assume or forecast there's gonna be a lot more work on this vehicle given its age and its mileage. So anyhow, I hope this video helped someone out there. If you liked it, definitely throw that thumbs up and if you haven't already, definitely click that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.